Hey guys, so uh, with you guys doing a lot of atmospheric stuff this semester, we've got several videos that um, are going to help you with the physics and the engineering analysis that you need to do. Um, there's already been a video where we've talked about, where Matt talked about the different regimes in the atmosphere and what we want you to assume to do. And uh, there's another video that I did actually last semester that talks about in detail how to do drag calculations. But we figure that's going to be uh, a pain for most of you to have to do. So we decided instead that we would have a, what? It requires Excel. Oh, it requires Excel. Excuse me. If you didn't hear Matt, because he's standing right behind the camera. Um, we thought maybe another thing you should do is to do some assumptions and use terminal velocity instead. And so that's what this little video is about if you want to use that assumption that basically instantaneously after you eject or you or you hit a regime in the atmosphere you you automatically hit terminal velocity and you do pretty quickly anyway so it's not like it's a really big assumption so from what we've decided uh, anything below 65 uh, kilometers anything below that 65 to 0 to the surface you need to do some sort of drag calculation and so this is the terminal velocity drag calculation is what I would say it was so, um, if you know anything about, I guess, physics, really, uh, you need to do a free body diagram of the object, your payload or the projectile that is going through the atmosphere through the fluid that we call the atmosphere. Uh, air is a fluid to us in fluid dynamics. Um, so, this guy has both drag, because we call that F sub D, and he also has, through his CG, which is what we would do that, weight. Mg, right? And that's how things fall through an atmosphere, no matter what it is. So the drag force and the, um, the weight of the object are really what causes this thing to happen, with nothing else really affecting it right now. So if you do the sum of forces, right, you get uh, Fd minus Mg, right? And what we would normally do is say mass times acceleration, because that's what F equals Ma is about, right? That was Newton's due. Um, but what we want to do is assume that there is, uh, it hit terminal velocity. And what that basically means is acceleration is zero. You no longer feel an acceleration when you do that. So if this goes to zero, basically drag has to equal weight, right? And so from there we can start playing some fun games, right? Because see now drag is basically, the equation is one half times the density of the fluid that you're in times the velocity that you're going squared, times some drag coefficient, times some planform area S, is what we would call that. And that is the area that um, the fluid sees. So like on a sphere, what the fluid sees is really just a circle, right? It's a surface area. But it's not the surface area of the entire body or the entire payload what is what you're doing. It's just the area, the biggest area that it sees, okay? So we know that C sub D is actually a geometric term. Uh, you can Google drag coefficient of uh, different objects, you know, drag coefficient of objects. You should actually get a table and you can match pretty close to what your payload looks like. It's not gonna be exact because the only way we could do an exact drag measurement of your payload would be actually to put it in a wind tunnel. And we're not gonna do that. So uh, look online and get a close approximation and that's okay, you know, that kind of thing is all right for you. What? No Wikipedia. Yeah, the bad word. Wikipedia from the teachers. And Matt said it, so I'm not, I'm not in trouble. Um, so that's that. And then you've got mass times gravity, right? And so you've got to know that. You've got to know the mass of your payload or the projectile that's plunging through the atmosphere. We know gravity. Gravity is like 8.83 meters per second squared. And I would do all of this in metric because if not, the English system is... Ugh. It's just awful, so don't do it. So we already know those two terms because you've got to know those. You've got to know the mass of your projectile or assumption right now of what you you assume what your projectile is, and you know gravity, right? We know density because we're going to assume some densities in the atmosphere of Venus. Then uh, drag coefficient is a, basically a geometric property that you look up on Wikipedia. Wikipedia, you know. And then plan form area is you've got to look at the largest area that's going to be seen by the flow and calculate that area, right? 
And so with all of that in mind, then we can solve for this bad boy, right? Velocity, because we want to know how fast is the object falling. Because the point to all of this is to determine time, right? Because you need to know how, how long is it going to take you to hit the surface or to get to a certain point on the planet in the atmosphere so you can take your measurements because that's how long your, your lifetime is, right? So that's the big thing. Throughout your entire uh, presentation so far, you've been going, we don't know our lifetime. Now you do. This is the calculation to show you what it is, okay? So we can rearrange this thing and basically we get that velocity is the square root of, I'm going to cheat because it's over here, uh, 2 times the mass times gravity divided by the density times the drag coefficient times the planform area. Okay? So that's what we can use. We can just say, hey, this is the velocity equation we're going to use. This is terminal velocity for a given thing, a projectile that has a given mass, that has a given uh, planform area, that has a given drag coefficient. This isn't universal, it's per projectile, okay? And then it's wherever you are in the atmosphere. And that's what we're also going to assume something as well in just a second, okay? So those are the things you have to know, right? So I'm going to sit here in the corner and write V again. So V equals the square root of 2mg over rho c sub d. Ooh, that's a really bad S. Uh, Planform area, S, okay? And so that's what we can use to find this stuff. So now we've got that. And from Matt's wonderful video, we talk about that below 65 kilometers, right? You've got to worry about this stuff. So what we suggest you do is you take the atmosphere, okay, so say this is 65 kilometers, right? And then we're going to say this is 55 kilometers. I would say chunk it in... 10 kilometer increments. You can see what I'm doing here, right? So you get it, you get the gist, right? So, because from there you can say, all right, uh, between these two regions, get an average density, and that's something else you need, right? Because the, really the big thing we don't know right now to figure out this velocity is the density, okay? But there are uh, charts out there online. You can Google atmospheric or Wikipedia See, Matt won't even say it now. He's trying to whisper it because he knows teachers are going to go, <sighs> and he'll. Uh, but you can get atmospheric profile, your pressure and temperature profile of Venus. Google it. It will come up, right? And you're going to get pressure and temperature, and you're going, <gasps> but that's not density. Aha! Uh -huh. But there's a cool, I don't remember, ideal gas law. Uh, there's Charles's law and Boyle's law and all that in chemistry. And I know the chemistry teachers are going to kill me because I don't remember which one's which, but I don't care. Then you multiply, pull them all together and you get the ideal gas law. And basically it says the pressure times the volume equals mass times the ideal gas number constant. constant times the temperature, right? So if you rearrange this equation, you've got mass over volume equals the pressure divided by the ideal gas constant times temperature. <gasps> Look at there. You know pressure? You know this, because R, I would use the R of uh, carbon dioxide, and that's an assumption, right? That's another one of the assumptions to think about when you go to the review board. But carbon dioxide is mostly what the atmosphere is, so it's close, it's good enough, right? Especially that low. Yeah, and the temperature, right? So, ta-da! You have density. You need to make sure you get the right units on all of this stuff, right? R can be in a certain unit, the pressure can be in a certain unit, and temperature can be in a certain unit. What you want, when you look at it, is kilograms per cubic meter, right? That's what you want density to be in, to make all this come together. So remember that when you're doing it, or it won't work for you, okay? So, but you can go look at the uh, tables, and you can figure out, I would just, I would say between 65 and 55 kilometers, do some numbers, and say the average is blah. You know, whatever you calculate it is, and say that's the average for this regime, this is the average for this region, you know, and you can keep on doing it, right? That's all you got to do. So, because that's what we really want, because what we're wanting to do is figure out, we have a projectile, and it comes to here, right? How long did that take? That's what we're after. Because we know the distance, right? Distance equals 10 kilometers. And we also know that uh, distance is velocity times time. So let's use a little d, aren't 
better get mad at me if I don't use it right. So, because from physics we know distance is basically velocity times time, right? So then we can find that time is death. I use big D. Uh, distance over velocity, right? So see, it's really simple from that perspective. So now all we gotta do is figure out velocity. Well, velocity is this guy, but, and so we know mass, cause we gotta know it. We know G, 8.83. We know density because we calculated it and figured out an assumption of an average in here, right? We know drag coefficient, cause we looked it up on Wikipedia and found out what it was, sort of for our payload. And we found the plan form area, so we're good to go, right? Everything's there, we're good to go. So now we can start calculating. So what we did is I just assumed some values, and I'm gonna give you these values so then you can make sure you write them out, you plug them in, and you get exactly the same thing as I did, okay? So for my fictitious example, what I did was said, all right, so for every 10 kilometers, so for every 10 kilometers, my uh, density changes by one kilogram per meter cube, right? So I'm plunging through the atmosphere and just saying it's one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, right? That's all I'm doing. And also what I said was I have a sphere. It's a 10 centimeter uh, diameter sphere, right? And so what I ended up finding out was the mass of my sphere, I just said it was one kilogram. Uh, the drag coefficient for a sphere, if you look it up on Wikipedia, is 0.47. And then the plan form area, so basically that circle of the sphere, it's a 10 diameter, 10 centimeter diameter circle. Uh, the area was, oh, where is it? Uh, 1.26 meters squared, right? And see, you need to look. See, I'm doing everything in metric, kilograms, meters, all that kind of stuff. Don't use English. It will be awful on you, right? Don't use bars. Don't use atmospheres. Nothing. Kilograms, meter, Kelvin, that scale is what you want to use, the metric system. You should all be able to do that, okay? So these are just things that were indicative of my payload, my sphere, right? They don't have anything to do with physics or atmosphere yet, nothing. That's all about the sphere, right? So what I can say is, all right, at the first regime, I'm gonna file 10 kilometers at one ki in the one kilogram density atmosphere, right? So now I can use the equation, and I'm just going to put a one, because that means that's my, my velocity at one kilogram per cubic meter. Two times one times 8.83, right? Divided by one times C sub D, 0.47 times S, which is 0 0.126, okay? If I did my math right, that's 17.3 meters per second, okay? That's the velocity that this thing we're gonna assume is flying at for 10 kilometers in the atmosphere. Basically, you can say it's from 65 to 55. It's gonna fly at 17.3, right? But it's because I assume the one kilogram per meter is cubed. That's not the density between 65 and 55. This is an example. You have to go calculate it, right? So if you do it, then you can look and say, okay, well the time it took to do that D over V, D is 10,000 meters, right? Because you got to make sure you got your units right, divided by 17.3 meters per second, okay? And if I did that math right, where that one at? I get 578 seconds. So it took 578 seconds for that thing to fall 10 kilometers, assuming that the density of through it was going was at one kilogram per cubic meter, right? And it was only, it automatically, it instantaneously reached uh, terminal velocity, okay? Likewise, velocity two, meaning it was two kilograms per cubic meter, two times one times 8.83, divided by two times 0.47 times 0 0.126, Again, if I did my math right, that's 12.2 meters per second, right? It makes sense. This is the gut check. It's a higher density. It went the same distance, so it should be going slower, right? And that's the point. Well, it actually doesn't have anything to do with distance, but it should be going slower because it's going through a thicker 
thing. It's got to take a while, right? Difference between air, some dropping something in air and dropping something in the water. When it hits the water, if it's still going to go straight, it's slow. It's slower, right? So again, time uh, d over v. So ten thousand divided by twelve point two, and I got eight hundred twenty seconds. Okay. And so you can keep going on and on and on, right? So I got the velocity at three. I'm just gonna do it right quick. Um, I got it to be 10 meters per second. The velocity at four kilograms per cubic meter was 8.6 meters per second. And the velocity at five kilograms per cubic meter was 7.7 .7 meters per second. Likewise, time was uh, 1,000 seconds at three kilometers per second, or three kilometers. Kilograms per cubic meter, I'm not going crazy now. Time at four is 11.63 seconds. And time at five is uh, 1,299 seconds. You can also see where I'm rounding off, right? You should calculate these numbers and you get lots of diff digits. <laughs> It's not that accurate. We're assuming so many things. I mean, a tenth of a meter a second is pretty okay, you know, rounding off. To me, whole seconds, you know, we don't, half a second, who cares? Really, that's not going to change anything in life. So what you can do now is you can sum all these times together, and that's how long it takes you to fall, right? So the total time is you add all these seconds together, right? T1, T2, T3, T4, right? All of that. And you get that's 4,860 seconds or 81 minutes. There's your lifetime, right? And now by looking at the calculation of battery mass video, you would then know how long your batteries need to be on for. Okay? But again, this is fictitious. You have to figure out, like we know, the closer you get to the surface, it's what, 67, 68 kilograms per cubic meter? 60, right? Five is not right, you know? So you need to calculate by this equation what the density is, and then plug in and make this work. This is just a fictitious example to show you what to do. It's the process of how to do it, okay? And that's what's the most important, is the process. You have to explain this to us, to the review board, everybody. We did this, then we did this, then we did this, then we did this, right? So hopefully this will give you some insight and help in calculating some of the parameters you do when you fall through the atmosphere, okay? As always, let us know if you have any questions. Matt and I, well, Matt will answer you. I don't know about me. But, you know, we'll get back with you or we'll have your POC talk to you or anything else or have your teacher even talk to us, okay? So talk to you guys later. Bye.